it's a major failure of our intelligence, it's a major failure of our defense forces, and it's for sure it's a major failure of, of the strategy of leadership um, on the government level. I'm a um, former soldier commander, a general uh, minister of foreign affairs interior, uh, minister of defense, prime minister, and once again, Minister of Defense. I didn't need anything more to understand that it's the worst day in the history of the country, or the worst day for the Jewish people since World War II, and uh, that nothing will be the same from now on. And according to you, why is Benjamin Netanyahu refusing to, uh, to have a deal and to end this war? Whenever the need to release the hostages, for example, comes into a clash with his need to stay in power, he prefers his political interest. We as a nation, we abandoned these people. They are not uh, prisoners of war. They were not soldiers. Most of them were citizens uh, going to, to sleep uh, and then woke up to be taken or murdered or slaughtered or raped or whatever. Uh, so we once abandoned them as a nation. Netanyahu felt that there is an interest, even said whoever wants to block a Palestinian state from emerging has to support my uh, policy of strengthening the Hamas and weakening the Palestinian Authority. And he was ready to go very far. He basically uh, encouraged the Qataris to pay $1.5 million over five years. But he totally lost the trust of the people, and, and based on his behavior, it became in a way illegitimate in the minds of majority of Israel. I want just to point to the real mistake of, of, uh, of the Netanyahu government. They behave as which the way to win over Hamas is to impose more uh, military pressure. And Netanyahu himself said at the beginning of the uh, crisis that Israel does not intend to stay there. But his behavior in recent months tell you the opposite, that he probably thinks that we have to stay there. And that's a tragedy because that, that says basically that we are the ones to replace uh, Hamas, the, the worst option for Israel, to the best of my judgment. Uh, talking not from uh, messianic ideology, but from the practic uh, practicalities of, of uh, using of force. And one year of war in Gaza, does um, this war still have any meaning? Yeah, it has a meaning. We have to, we have to make sure. I, mean, I mentioned it in, in, the, in the opening remark. Israel has a compelling imperative to make sure that Hamas uh, does not uh, reign over Gaza and it cannot threaten Israel. If 15,000 of those who were killed were Hamas uh, activists, still it remain, if the numbers are true, some 25 uh, civilians, some of them women and children, which, which uh, no one wanted to be killed. But how do you react when you hear some Israeli officials talking about killing all the Gazans. I think that they do not understand uh, the Israeli interest. And uh, now, for them, there's a risk to end up in front of International Court of Justice. Yeah, it's, uh, it's part, of the, part of the risk. We, of course, will fight it, we'll try to block it, and, but it's, it's a risk. And you know, I usually use his own uh, metaphors. When he attacked uh, Prime Minister Olmert, he was head of opposition during the war in 2008, he said the captain who just uh, uh, sank the Titanic, if he would have survived, could not get the uh, um, uh, steering wheel of the new uh, uh, ship. And I say, the, the captain who, who twice sank the Titanic, one on October 7th and other, other ones who leading the, the most failing war in our history, 
or uh, for long 11 months, still, we are still stuck in Gaza with the Hamas, which is not a big army.